Hi, my name is Robin Wong. I'm a photographer based in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Welcome back to another episode of Robin Speaks. This is a video podcast series where I talk about random photography topics. And boy oh boy, I have really interesting topics to share in this particular episode. I finally, finally got my hands on the OM system or M1. I'll definitely share how I got this camera and what I'm gonna do with this camera. And I've also added a new lens to my camera bag. There's plenty of topics to cover, so let's do this. Before we start, I just want to make a quick announcement. I will be joining a live stream with some amazingly talented photographers. Some of the names you probably know, Peter Forsgaard, Mati Sulanto, Emily from Micro Four Nerds, Jimmy Chang from Red35, and of course, Rob Trek, who will be hosting this live session. The live stream will be happening on the 12th of February, this coming Sunday at 10 o'clock Malaysian time. For your exact time for your location, please refer to the video link. I'll leave it in the description and also pinned comment below. I can't wait to join these wonderful photographers all of them are incredibly talented. I'm a, a huge fan for all of them. Uh, we we'll have some questions to answer. And of course, feel free to join in and ask me anything. I'll try my best to answer. I'll see you guys there. Not too long ago, I've made a video to talk about my reasons why I was not getting the Olympus OM-1. Wait a minute. Is it the Olympus OM-1 or is it OM System OM-1? Technically, the new brand is OM System, but there is also the Olympus name on the camera. And this OM1 is the last ever camera to feature the Olympus name. So honestly, I will prefer to call it Olympus OM1. Anyways, the video I've made to talk about why I wasn't getting one, I'll put the link to the video up here. Please check it out if, if you have not done so. I will not repeat myself here, but a quick recap of what I've said in that video. Basically, I didn't get the OM1 because it was quite pricey and I couldn't justify the cost for my photography business. It doesn't add anything new or the improvements were not significant enough for me to compel me to buy one. Basically, it doesn't add any business to me. If I get the OM1, I'm not going to expand my business drastically or I wouldn't be able to get more clients. Uh, it doesn't add profit to what I do. So having to spend that kind of money, especially now that my photography business is still on the recovering phase, well, it wasn't the best decision to make. So I decided not to upgrade to OM-1. I was staying with my excellent EM-1 Mark III. And of course, I still have the EM-1 Mark II. Both cameras are still fully capable to deliver fantastic results for all the professional jobs that I do today. And my clients are happy and they still come back to me and I still get shoots and I still deliver these results to my clients. So basically, I said no to the OM-1 and I pretty much have moved on. I was pretty happy to use the EM-1 Mark III for at least another two years, three years, and I wasn't thinking of upgrading or getting any camera or switching system. I know some of you were assuming that, oh, Robin is going to go Sony full frame, or Robin is going to go and get into the Fuji system, or Robin is going to go get Nikon. No, no, no. <laughs> Please don't jump to conclusions. Nothing like that has happened. I was perfectly happy where I was. My growth for third system is still my main workhorse and I'm perfectly happy using them. So where does this OM1 come from? <laughs> Here is the interesting thing. A few weeks ago, I received an email from someone. It is a subscriber. And that fantastic person said to me, hey Robin, I have an OM1 and I want to give it to you. No strings attached. I believe in what you do. 
I like what you're doing on your YouTube channel and I want you to continue doing what you do. Here is the OM one. I know that you couldn't afford one. And here is one camera for you to use and continue to produce content and share it with everyone. I want you to use the OM one. And when I saw that email, I was like, Holy, <laughs> I was honestly, honestly quite speechless. Uh, it took me a while to process what happened. Uh, this technically is the single largest contribution or donation that I've ever received in my life in terms of value. Of course, I didn't immediately say yes. There was some hesitation going on. Should I accept this? Um, you know, what do I have to do? Is it morally right to get a camera from a complete stranger halfway across the world? But after going back and forth internally in my head, I accepted the gift. And my reasons are very simple. It was a very interesting feeling to have someone believe in you. And that is very empowering, very inspiring. And I don't really know how to describe that feeling to you. And to have an evidence and to have something to, to tell me, to confirm that what I'm doing now on this YouTube platform, on my blog, or whatever photography that I've been doing all this time, the things that I do actually matter. The things that I do does help some people out there in whatever small ways that I'm actually contributing positively to the community and to have that affirmation, man, that feeling is priceless. And for someone to believe in me and send me this OM1 just to show support, just so that I can continue making content, man, <laughs> I think... This, this will stay with me, this feeling, this inspiration, this source of drive, this motivation will stay with me. I will take this camera, whatever this energy or this positive vibe that's in this camera, and I'll infuse it with me and continue to make more content here and share it with you guys. I want to continue to make more and more content, take more photographs, share more photography tips, and bring you guys along with me on this journey. This OM1, it just refreshes and it just gives me a new boost of energy. A huge, huge shout out to the person who sent me this OM1. Uh, that person wishes to remain anonymous and I have to respect that. So let's just call the person Jay. Thank you so much, Jay. This means a whole world to me. And indeed, in some ways, it is life changing. And you know what? I'm paying it forward. And here are the two things that I want to do. Since I got this OM1 for free, completely free, and I don't even have to do anything, right, to get this camera, it is only fair that I also give something away. That's the only fair thing for me to do to pay it forward. And I've decided to give my EM1 Mark III away. The EM1 Mark III is still in a very good condition. It is less than two years old. Yes, I've used it to do a lot of my photography jobs. I've done some videos with it, but it's still in very, very, very good condition. And I'm giving it away to a friend here locally in Malaysia. I'm not gonna disclose his identity, but he fully deserves this camera. He is still using the original EM1 to make content until this day. If you have seen his EM1, it is falling apart. The entire exterior is already, everything has come off. Uh, you can see the, the metal chassis of the camera exposed, the rubber grip, everything has peeled off. Uh, it was in such, a, an ugly looking condition, but the camera is still working. That just shows how amazing the EM1 is from Olympus. Uh, the camera is already more than 10 years old now. So, you know, for him to continue to use this camera today to do shoots, uh, to make content, I do think he deserves an upgrade. Of course, uh, we can't here in Malaysia, our income is not that high. We can't just, oh, I want the new latest and greatest camera. I just swap my credit card and get that camera. No, it doesn't doesn't work that way. A cost of a camera is enough for us to survive maybe for half a year. Uh, 
for some people who don't spend that much money here locally in Malaysia. And you know, we don't make that much money. So I think that friend, he fully deserves this EM1 Mark III. Uh, the camera has been sent to him. I don't have the EM1 Mark III at the time of, of me publishing this video. And I'm very sure it is in good hands and I can't wait to see what he can do with the camera. The second thing that I'm gonna do is to continue making content and creating fresh content with this OM-1. I don't think there's any point for me to do a review for this Olympus OM-1. Now it's been a year since its release and there are so many reviews available online. Whatever that is to be said about this camera has been said already. So I don't think I can add anything useful to what's already been published. But I am going to use this camera, I'm going to do my photography jobs with this OM-1, I'm going to use it for some of my shutter therapy sessions, I'm going to do POV video, I'm going to do street photography, I'm going to record some videos, and definitely I'm going to share my experience using the camera, what I like, what I dislike, and of course, there will be a lot of new, fresh photographs taken with this or M1. Honestly, I've just taken this camera out of the box. I have not even taken a single photograph of this camera. I'm just making this video podcast first. Of course, to thank Jay for being so generous, for being so supportive. And of course, to share with you guys that I have this OM-1. I guess it is very important also for me to be transparent with everyone, to be fully honest where this camera comes from. I didn't buy this camera after all and suddenly it just appears. If I didn't say anything, that would really sound very suspicious. The support from Jay, it also embodies the support of everyone. It also shows how the community feels about this channel. It also shows that all of you have been here all along and it makes me feel very appreciated. It makes me feel that, hey, what I do here, people do acknowledge and they do find it useful. So it is an extension from everyone. I believe this camera doesn't really belong to me now. I feel that it belongs to everyone in this channel. We're all in this together. And because of you guys being here, watching this video, watching my other videos, being here in this channel, because of your continuous support, because of you always watching my video, that gives me reason or gives me a purpose, makes what I do here actually meaningful. So this camera is for all of us. About a month ago, I've also added a new lens to my camera bag. This is the Panasonic Leica 9mm f1.7. I'm in the midst of getting enough sample photographs and I will share my review in this channel soon. So stay tuned for that. But in case you missed it, I've also published my thoughts, my initial impressions, and sharing why, the main reasons why I actually purchased this 9mm f1.7 lens. I'll share the video, the link to the video up here. Please check it out. It is on my second channel, my vlogging channel. Yes, I do have a second YouTube channel where I talk about things that are not related to photography, my lifestyle, the places that I go to, the people that I hang out with, the food that I eat, some travel, uh, even some personal thoughts or some gadgets that I'm using, I'm reviewing it there. So of course, the main photography content, like tips and tricks on using Micro Four Thirds cameras or POV video photography or any camera reviews or any photography topics, the main topics will be on this channel. I'm keeping that separate. So do subscribe to the second channel. It will mean a lot to me. But stay tuned for my review on this 9mm. I've had so much fun shooting with this lens and I can't wait to share my thoughts with you guys. It is time to read some comments. Lord Vedder 330 said, if you have to correct for distortion in post, I can do that with my 8mm f1.8 fish eye. I'll pass on these Chinese products. There was a comment for my Lawa 6mm f2 review. Now, Lord Vader, here are the few things that I disagree with you. Number one, using a fish eye lens is completely different if you compare it with a rectilinear lens. Yes, you can do some correction for the fish eye distortion, but because fish eye has so much distortion, 
after you correct it to rectilinear, the conversion, you do lose a lot of width and it may not be as wide as the 6mm lower, which is already rectilinear to begin with. And because of so much correction happening, you are technically stretching the image. The pixels being stretched at the corners, at the edge of the screen, of the frame, then you will lose a lot of pixel integrity. The images will look soft at the sides, out of the center. You'll, all the problems of the lens will be exaggerated. If you have chromatic aberration, you have big netting, whatever. Any problems at the corners, it will become more severe after this post fisheye distortion dewarping, right? So, yes, fisheye lenses are great. Don't, don't get me wrong, I do enjoy using fisheye lenses. If you want to have a fisheye lens, use it as a fisheye lens. Take advantage of the distortion. You can create some really impactful images using a fisheye lens. But for some serious work, say architecture or interior, where you need every single width and your client wants perfectly straight lines, they don't want any distortion, I don't think a fisheye lens can replace a true rectilinear lens. And currently, the Lawa 6mm is still the widest rectilinear lens for micro four thirds system. Another problem is that the Fisheye lens doesn't take in filters. I do some video shooting, especially for my vlogging. So of course, the Lawa 6mm will definitely have the benefit of being able to attach an ND filter to cut off some light. You cannot do that with the Fisheye 8mm f1.8. That's another disadvantage of using the Fisheye lens. And that Olympus 8mm f1.8, don't get me wrong, it is an excellent lens. It is, I really love that lens as well, but it also costs almost twice as much as what the Lawa is offering for the 6mm f2. So I think if you need a rectilinear lens, the Lawa is a no-brainer. Lenon Rampis asked, can you please explain why Mzuko Telelens does not work in RAW file? I used Mzuko 40 to 150mm to take picture. The result in JPEG was zoom, but the RAW result just like normal picture, not zoom. Here's the problem, Linong. You have accidentally, or maybe you have intentionally enabled digital teleconverter. I've said this many times in my tips videos in the past. Please turn off the digital teleconverter in your camera. Every time someone comes to me and say, Robin, why do my photographs look so bad? Robin, why is my iPhone camera taking better photographs than my Olympus Pen or OMD? Robin, why is my photos looking so pixelated? They look so bad in comparison to what I can do with my smartphone. And when, when every single time I check, they have digital teleconverter enabled. And then I ask them, why did you turn on the digital teleconverter? And they say, oh, because some famous YouTubers said that this can be very useful. It actually helps. Guys, please turn off the digital teleconverter. I've said this many times and please trust me. I have not misled you in any of my photographer tips I've shared all these years. Can you please trust me this one time? Freaking turn off that digital teleconverter, it brings nothing but misery. Praveen Ramkuma said, Hi Robin, another great inspiring video. Thank you so much Praveen. Uh, Praveen was referring to the ISO 200 night low light shooting challenge. A small doubt, would those lower ISO extensions 60, 100 have any advantages in these situations? My answer is no. When you're shooting at ISO 200, that's the base ISO for micro four thirds cameras, both from Olympus and Panasonic at the moment. All cameras from micro four thirds, the base ISO is 200. I don't know what's gonna change in the future. I cannot predict the future, but this is true at the time of this video. When you're shooting at base ISO 200, you get the best dynamic range, you get the best noise control, you get the best color tonality. Basically, you get the most out of your camera, you squeeze every single bit, every bit of quality you can from the camera and you get the most at ISO 200. When you go to extended values like ISO 100, ISO 60, those are extensions, there will be some compromises. You'll lose one stop of dynamic range or more. Uh, your results will suffer, it will not be the same. 
The reason why I say stick with ISO 200, well, you get the best. And you can get away with ISO 200 because of the amazing 5SS image stabilization. Richard Nugent asked, Robin, two questions. Number one, did you have a problem seeing the screen to frame your shots under the Malaysian bright sun? Richard was referring to the GR3X Rico. And the second question is, how does the GR3 screen visibility compare to that of the OMD EM5 Mark III or EM1 Mark II? Now, the first question, uh, I did not have any problems composing through the screen, uh, but I do admit that I was shooting under cloudy conditions. It wasn't under full blast of the Malaysian sun. So under cloudy shade, uh, it was okay. Overcast day, the screen is still pretty much enough for me to compose my shots. Again, when I'm taking photographs, I don't really judge exposure or white balance or colors or noise or sharpness. I just compose my shots and I trust that, that the camera can nail the shot, right? Uh, I don't chimp when I take photographs. Uh, the second question, with how it compares with the EM5 Mark, Mark II, Mark III, or the Olympus cameras, well, the Olympus screen somehow is brighter and less reflective, if that makes any sense. But having said that, every time I shoot with my Olympus camera in really bright condition, I will use the electronic viewfinder. That's the purpose of having a viewfinder, right? You don't have to look through the screen, going through the glare and everything. The viewfinder works. Someone by the nickname of A said, great review. However, I don't agree with your opinion on image stabilization. Actually, for me, this is really impressive. Uh, A was referring to the GR3X. I took sharp photos at shutter speed of one over 30th of a second handheld. 1 over 30th of a second, and you call that impressive. Really? Have you seen what we can do with our Olympus OMD cameras? I can handhold all the way down to 4 or 5 seconds confidently. And at 1 second, I don't even have a second guess. At half a second, it's so easy. Now the problem is, I was complaining, I couldn't get 1 tenth of a second from the, the Ricoh GR3X. One of the 30th, you don't even need image stabilization. You just take photographs. I don't see anything impressive with that. Vector said, having the headphone jack on the receiver is pretty awesome. Adds the capacity to a camera without one. Vector was referring to the Boya wireless microphones that I've reviewed recently. Uh, yes, that receiver of the wireless microphone does have a headphone jack for monitoring. Now, I would discourage anyone to use any microphone receivers for audio monitoring. If you want to use any audio monitoring, you should monitor directly from your camera. You should not use the receiver because what you hear from the receiver may not be the same as what you hear from the camera that's recorded in your camera. Your camera has another amplifier, it has another electronic circuit, it has another level of processing before it saves the audio that's recorded in the video file. So what's coming in from the microphone may be perfect, it may be problem-free, you don't find any issues, so when you monitor directly from the receiver, everything may sound fine, but once it gets recorded in the camera, things may be different. So yes, it may be convenient to have that headphone jack on the receiver, but I think it's practically useless. Steve Fitzel asked, why did you do the complete video with your eye closed? Now, Steve, this is the kind of comment that will get you banned from my channel. That's all I have to share in this episode of Robin Speaks. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and I cannot, cannot wait to go out and shoot with this OM-1. Again, thank you so much, Jay, for sending this camera over. I really appreciate the support. And man, that generosity, that encouragement that you've sent, I will carry that energy with me, and you will see this energy in my coming videos. And for you guys, keep the comments coming. I appreciate your support. Again, I want to thank everyone for being here. I always say that without you guys, without the subscribers, without all the views on this channel, 
I will not be here. And it's just like I'm talking with myself, right? So all of you being here, it made what I do real. It gives meaning to this channel. So thank you, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. If you've enjoyed watching this episode, please consider buying me a cup of coffee or you can contribute directly to my PayPal. Links in the description below on how you can do that. Any small contribution goes a long way, will definitely help me to, to produce more content, to share more photography tips, to share more photographs. All of them will be published here in this channel. Until the next one, please go out and take more photographs. Bye-bye.